What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another FNAF theory review video. This is the second edition because you guys really, really enjoyed the first video, and I'm really glad you did actually because um, I don't know. It was like a really cool concept I thought in my head, and I did. I was like, is it gonna work on YouTube? Is is it gonna work? So I'm glad that it did work for the most part for the people that watched. Um, <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, thank you for clicking on this video as well. Um, we are going to be reacting to three more videos today. Um, two of them, I, uh, two of the people I, I have never reacted to before. I've never seen any of their videos before. They are very, very underrated YouTubers, apparently. I, I get my suggestions from my Discord server, so you can join in the description below. So it's going to be interesting to see new theorists and to see if we can shine some light on some, on some rising stars. <laughs> um, but also, we are reacting to someone who I do know, I, I know personally, but I haven't seen the most recent video, so we're going to be watching that together. So, that's a little teaser of what's to come. Um, let's get straight into the first video, and this is by a theorist called The Logic... The Logicist. The Logicist. I said that correctly first time. It's called FNAF Ultimate Custom Night Solved. UCN solves security breach. They only have 627 subscribers at the time of recording this, but this video has 41,000 views, which is insane. Clearly it's a good video, so I want to see what all the hype is about. I think we should just get straight into it. Let's go. I thought Ultimate Custom Night was one of the simplest games in the series. I was wrong. At the time, it really? seemed rather straightforward. Okay. This was William Afton's hell and being kept there by cats. I think it's pretty straightforward, but gun. the one you should not have killed then is a bit something iffy. happened. Security breach happened. This is where we found out that William was still kicking around. Sure, we saw some version of Debatable, but yeah. VR, but we were still unsure at that time what to make of it. Mm -hmm. However, once we saw William back in that old suit, we knew it was the real deal. And it wasn't just him. Cassie was back as the princess in the Princess Quest arcade games. Mm -hmm. And looking at some of the staff bots, maybe so it's Charlie not as, well. as simple as it just ending. And then there's the one that at Ultimate Custom Night, the Blob. This thing right here sucks. <laughs> years have passed away in FNAF 6. True. Clearly, that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. The games even doubled down on this fact in Princess Quest when we first. Yeah, and and also like the big the big iffy point for me in the whole series right now is like. When the hell does Happiest Day happen? <laughs> that's that's a big question for me at least because you know it, it is a game it is a mini game in FNAF three. It's it's clearly supposed to be the end of the series after FNAF three, but now we have games that come after FNAF three in the timeline. So is Happiest Day also taken with it, or did Happiest Day happen? But not really because then that would mean all the souls are gone. So really, there's there's like two possibilities either. Happiest Day happens after FNAF 6 and all the souls are gone. We have new souls now and, and new children and new characters entirely. Or Happiest Day hasn't even happened yet. And I don't know which one I want to believe more. I, I think I'm more inclined to believe that Happiest Day hasn't happen, happened yet, but I don't think that's very satisfying. So I also want to know when Happiest Day comes in. I think that's quite intriguing. One major theory that I've seen is that the spirits had actually moved on, and what we see left over is actually Agony. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that Agony and Remnant seem to be one and the same. In FNAF AR, you collect yeah. different types of Remnant. It Each depends who you talk to, but they're pretty much the same. Of that remnant. Agony seems to be Dark Remnant, Remnant that has been fully corrupted. Yes, I, I believe that. So yeah. either way, in that FNAF 6 fire, all that Remnant should have been burned away. Unless the games were trying to tell us It was something. only neutralized. Yeah. It might be possible that the Dark effect. Remnant or Agony is just a way stronger version of normal Remnant that is able to withstand that high temperatures. And this will lead us right into Ultimate Custom Night. I believe William yes. is being kept in this in-between state to be tortured by Cassidy. The yes, spirit. I would agree. With that basis down, I started doing research. But what I found surprised me. All that stuff I was talking about earlier about Security Breach was all set up in Ultimate Custom Night. There seems to be a lot more spirits than just William Cassie at play here. The first obvious clue here is Old Man Consequences. Okay, okay. This man first showed up in FNAF World, but... Where are you going with this? With his appearances in Ultimate Custom Night and now Security Breach, maybe? It seems he might also be a spirit. 
I mean, him and Kasri literally hold I did a think conversation that. in this game. I think when Andrew was first a thing in the Fazbear Frights, my mind instantly went to Old Man Consequences because he's wearing an alligator mask. Like, like how closer can you get, really, to Old Man Consequences there? But then, then you have the question of, like, well, then, if Andrew is Old Man Consequences, then Old Man Consequences is the demon to his demons. I mean, is the demon of Afton the demon... But then, like, why would he tell her to rest? Why, why would he tell Cassidy to rest if he wanted to torture Would it Like, surely they should be working together. Why would he want Cassidy to... Like, this is a big problem I have with Andrew just in general. And we did talk about it in the first theory review a little bit. But, like, I don't, I don't really think Andrew and Cassidy should coexist. I, I do think there may be a connection between Old Man Consequences and Andrew. Is Old Man Consequences a soul? That's a very good question. Because if you think about it, if you think about it, there's nothing else he can really be. Right? So then, then you have the question of who is Old Man Consequences? Who is the soul in Old Man Consequences? So that's that's an interesting question, and I, and I hope that you answer it, because I really want to know the answer. <laughs> who else is here? For that answer, we're going to have to move on to the puppet. Charlie? In fact, the puppet's death line spell out the entire game for us. Charlie has two sets of voice lines. I am more aware. The first set's pretty obvious. It's Charlie taunting William, seeing him powerless. The others are like animals, I am more aware. powerless is like music to me. Now listen to this next audio tape, and then you're going to realize the shift. The others are like animals, but I am very aware. And it's that word aware that sets everything else into motion. Okay. It seems that Charlie might be aware that Cassie is the one oh. pulling the strings. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. That is a very, very good point. Because if you think about it, the puppet says that she is aware. Charlie says that she is aware. So that means that she has to be part of Ultimate Custom Night in some way. She has to play a role. Because... That's that's what aware means. It it means you are present. You are, um, you you know about your own being and you know about your presence in this universe, right? So kind of like, I feel like that is. I think you're right. I think you're on the right track. I think Cass, um, sorry, Charlie is definitely here in some way. Old man consequences, though. I'm I'm intrigued to see where this is going. Let's look at those final voice lines, shall we? The others are under my protection. Alright, this line tells us huh. two things. Number one, other spirits seem to be here. As it's disappointed basically what I said, yeah. feel, it seems that fire and pizza sim didn't actually get rid of all that remnant. I don't hate you, but you need to stay out of my way. This final line just kind of confirms it for me. This line wouldn't make sense if it's directed at William. He is powerless to do anything here. So how exactly you need is to Cassidy stay out of my way, way of Cassidy? Charlie? Oh, well, think about it. What is Charlie's overall goal in the series? Sure, so it's to protect the other spirits, but it's also hmm. to help them find rest. Cassie is keeping the other spirits from moving on. Therefore, uh. Charlie's way. This seems to actually tell us the overall story of Ultimate Custom Night. Even after the FNAF 6 fire, Cassie is keeping William and all the other spirits in that fire from passing on. And remember that line about Charlie saying the others are like animals? It seems like Cassie's forcing these other spirits to play in this yeah, game that okay. she's created. But the fact that Charlie uses the word animals makes me believe that Cassie is corrupting these yeah. other spirits. Possibly turning their remnant into dark remnant. Yeah. <laughs> but the story of Ultimate Custom hmm. Knight doesn't stop there. I believe huh. the story of Ultimate Custom Night is really just a battle between Cassidy and Charlie. We can actually see this battle take place in the game's intermissions. You see, in Ultimate Custom Night, after hitting certain high scores, you are given a cutscene from either one or oh. two stories. These two different stories are more like two different sides of an argument. The first one I'll be talking about is Toy Chica, The High School Years, which seems to be Cassidy's argument. Toy Chica here is really William Afton. Toy Chica talking about how she's going to get her next boyfriend is really William's plan to kill the next child. 
This is Cassie's stinger argument of how William doesn't deserve to move on, that he deserves help. Okay, I think that's the a little bit of a stretch, given but sure. bare of vengeance. This, this, this is seems actually to be quite Charlie's convincing. Argument on the matter. I don't find these characters to be a one-on-one -on -one representation, but rather they represent a side. It's Charlie saying that, hey, William has escaped justice for his crimes time and time again, and in Pizza Sim, we finally won. We set that fire to end his reign of terror. It's you, Cassidy, who is taking this win away from us. You are preventing our win by letting him live on. But we see this argument. I guess. Work, as we see Cassidy still twitching in that Golden Freddy suit, unable to let go. But as we see from FNAF VR, we know Charlie was right. Mm -hmm. William's able to escape into the FNAF VR game. And well, we know the story from there. So that's most of Ultimate Custom Night Saw. There's just one more thing I want to talk about. I need to talk about one of the Stranger characters on this roster. This game is yes! Nightmare Yon's yes! first canon appearance. I was going to uh, talk about assuming this. Assuming we're not counting FNAF. I was going to talk about this. There seems to be some consequences to Charlie's failure to convince Cassie to like Yes, him. let's go. Like I already established, I believe Cassie is corrupting all the other spirits and turning the remnant into dark oh, okay. or agony. I believe that Cassie transforms Charlie into this nightmarish creature, or nightmare own as we know it. This is important to know because as we see in FNAF Hell Wanted, it seems that Charlie, as this nightmarish creature, is escaping back into the real world. I know FNAF Hell Wanted is supposed to be a recap of the series, but Nightmare Yawn has no canon appearances that the Fazbear Entertainment team should even know about. But, as we see in Security Breach, it seems like she's point. no longer limited to the virtual world and is now escaping back into the real world. I mean, just take a look at some of these stat bot heads that we see in this mm -hmm. game. This is a darker version of Charlie that's going after William. Yeah, I, I agree with back that. Back to the hell he crept out of. And this is really the secret story of Security Breach. It's Cassidy and Charlie returning back to the real world to capture the escaped William Afton. But hey, that's all for now. Hey! If you enjoyed watching this video, hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. And I love feedback, so please leave a comment below. All right, bye. That was very good. That was really interesting. I actually genuinely really enjoyed that. It was a really simple video in a really simple format. Um, and like, it, it, it was fine as, as a video. The idea is magical actually like I don't, I don't know why that's the first word that sprang to mind but it, it is magical um so just considering your last point about night marion you're absolutely right i think Ma night marion is a darker version of charlie if you haven't seen my my night marion video which is about to hit a million views what um then i i i talked about a lot that night marion kind of represents death in my opinion in the series i i know nightmare and that Marion kind of both represent death, but they are kind of interchangeable at this point. Um, basically, go watch the video. <laughs> and that is a big reason as to why the logo of Ultimate Custom Night isn't Golden Freddy, it is Night Marion. Because Night Marion does have a big part in Ultimate Custom Night as the dark version of Charlie. But that's a really cool theory, and I really like how you tied in Happiest Day there to say that like um you know the puppet wants to wants to free the souls but Cassidy is in her way I really really like that argument I think that works really well story-wise is it what Scott is intending though that's my question anyway um good video good video there's there's a lot of things to, for me to think about there and uh, go and subscribe because I I genuinely think that that is uh that is a good video so Thank you for that, and uh, let's move on. Okay, so now we have a video by a, a slightly bigger theorist called Cosmic Star. 1.94k subscribers at the time of recording. This video only has 218 views, uh, and, I, and I, I don't really know why, because I've actually seen this video in my recommended, and I've wanted to click it, but I kind of kept it. Uh, for this, if I wanted to record this video, and, and now I'm here recording this video. It's called FNAF Color Co Oh my gosh, I'm, I can't speak today. It's called FNAF Color Connection Theories, and why they're kind of bad. I'm interested to see this, because I, I actually thought that, like, 
that the whole argument that Charlie is that green represents Charlie. I, I thought that was kind of convincing, and then you have purple with William and stuff. But I I, I want to see what you say about this because um, I I do think you, you may have a point with this because uh, I I think it could be very inconsistent and it might just not be the way that Scott does things in this universe. Let's get straight into it. I think. Hey there! Sorry to scare you with my horror. That was quite theory. scary. <laughs> This is my brand new Sona and channel mascot. Oh, that's Tommy. so cute. He's just a little I like something it. to help fill the void of my usually dull videos. FNAF theories are a very broad topic to discuss. Some good, some bad, some downright <laughs> weird. And among those theories is one <laughs> what that, that? all very commonly okay. used is extremely absurd in its premise. Mm -hmm. I call this theory the color connection theory. Okay. Basically, if a character has a specific or defining color, then any other character or even object sharing that color has a likelihood of being that same character or being related to them in some way. I think, yes, that is stupid. But I think with in general with with theory crafting and, and things like that especially in fnaf it's like there needs to be some sort of context you can't just say oh charlie represent or green sorry green represents charlie but those leaves over there on that tree are green therefore charlie is in that tree like that's that is far a bit too far obviously at the point where you've got like clearly a feud between charlie and william afton and then you see green versus purple steel wool logos on the on the website or whatever like that that to me is is more context and more more kind of like a big clue that maybe it is going to be all about green versus purple charlie versus afton so like it's it's things like that color connections aren't good by themselves but they're good supporting evidence this concept is also commonly used throughout the series the best example being the color purple for William Afton, aka Purple Guy. Yeah. His shady purple appearance. But then you have Michael. Car, and in more recent games, the purple eyes, signifying purple his eyes, presence yeah. in some way. Sure. These examples of color connection are used pretty well throughout their respected series. However, this is where theorizing messes things up. Really badly. Like, really, really <laughs> bad. The best example of how this color scheme concept got so messed up is probably Elizabeth Afton with her green eyes. Okay. In location, we're introduced to a mini game where we play as Circus Baby. In but she has blue game, eyes. Circus Baby has blue eyes. And then as she turns the green eyes. Ends, Circus she turns Baby green eyes. Elizabeth. And then throughout the main game, Circus Baby has green eyes, the same yeah. eye color that Elizabeth has. This and that's completely a valid. Clear indication that Circus Baby is very clear indication. Elizabeth. Now that seems pretty easy to understand, right? Now what if we bring in Vanessa? Vanessa also has green eyes. Circus Baby having green eyes like they were Elizabeth. <laughs> so if Vanessa has green eyes, that must mean they're Elizabeth too, right? Already you can probably see the downward spiral this path leads. This is where the color connection- You have green starts. eyes. You have one character Ooh, good who has music. a specific defining trait, in this instance being a color, and then you have another character who has a similar that was color a cool animation. defining trait. Pretty yeah. easy stuff. Mm. And then you just go through some mental gymnastics and boom, they're the same character. Yeah, I, I actually do understand what you mean, and I don't fully disagree. But I do still see kind of like, you know, the parallels between... Oh, parallels. The parallels between, like, Elizabeth and Vanessa and Crying Child and Gregory. Like, I, I do see it. The only thing I, I struggled with um, in, like, recent theories is, like, um, is, like, William say... It's, like, them... Oh, my gosh. I can't speak. It's, like, theorists saying that William chose Vanessa because she looks like his daughter. But the thing is, that doesn't really make any sense because his daughter wasn't that age. So, like... What? <laughs> Again, it is the thing of like, you need context, you need supporting evidence for this. When it's just green eyes, maybe maybe it will give you an indicator that, that there's something up, but like, it, it can't be the whole the whole basis of the of the theory. But I just want to show you how frequent these kinds of theories are. Now first you okay. have the basic Vanessa and Elizabeth are the same Pretty basic, yeah. Have green yeah. Eyes. And then you add another step to it. 
they're the same character because they have the same Ice hair cream. color. Yeah. And no, they don't. They, they, they don't have the same Their hair color. Their hair color is completely different. <laughs> one's like a bright yellow golden <laughs> color. The other one's orange. Like the color of the fruit orange. Like the brightest orange you could possibly get. And then there's a more recent theory made by FNAF. <clears throat> no disrespect to them at all. Yeah. They're a, they're a great FNAF theorist. They're a great content creator. They really but are. like... One of the points they made was a green button that that's supposed to signify yeah. it's Charlotte. I'm sorry, but Charlotte yeah. possessing Circus Baby already has green a defining feature being being the green eye. Yeah, <laughs> I don't feel like talking more in depth about it. So here's a montage to fill the void. Oh my gosh, this now is... Now that that's over, let's get into the main issue wow. of these kinds of color <laughs> that was a lot. theories. The first issue is storytelling, or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Elizabeth and Circus Baby. What's the reason Circus Baby has green eyes? Yeah, it's to show is it possession. Is the color green represents Elizabeth? No. Is it because green eyes represent Elizabeth? No. It's because Elizabeth is possessing Circus Baby, and the green eyes are to signify that. And yes. Of course we know this because we see it happen in Sister Location. And here's the thing with Charlie, and, and you're absolutely right about that, and here's the thing with Charlie. Charlie has nothing to do with eyes or anything like that. Or, actually, you've, you kind of convinced me with this. Charlie doesn't really have much to do with green either. Not entirely, at least. You you do have the green wristband, and that, that is a big indicator, I think, that there is still some sort of green versus purple thing going on. They are contrasting colours. The possession of Charlie is not signified by green or by green eyes. It is signified by tear streaks. And we know that because, well, the puppet exists. Nightmarion exists. But Security Puppet doesn't start out with tears. In the Security Puppet minigame, she doesn't have tears. After that, she does have tears. And of course, in uh, in the blob, the puppet doesn't have tear streams, meaning Charlie isn't possess it, uh, possessing the blob. Color connections are still obviously a thing, as we've discussed earlier with Purple Guy. However, they're really only prominent when they're directly shown to us. Like with Elizabeth and Circus Baby's eyes. They both have green eyes, but that doesn't mean everyone with green eyes is Yeah, it's not that Elizabeth. deep, yeah. Or like how William Afton can be represented through the color purple, but that doesn't mean anything that's purple represents William. Like Mr. Hippo or Classic Bonnie, they have little to no ties to William. Yeah, and that's a good way to go about it. This may represent that, but that doesn't mean that that represents this. Implications do not go two ways. Like, it's the whole the, the whole thing of, like, in in programming and in mathematics, you know, you have the implication sign, which is an arrow, and then you have an an okay, you have that that's an if statement. So that's an if statement, but then you have an iff statement, an if statement, which is essentially both ways. So if that, then that, and if that, then this. I'm really bad at explaining, but you probably know what I mean. If versus if. It matters how they're set up, or if they're even set up at all. It's the difference between mm -hmm. gaining green eyes through possession, or just two objects sharing the same color. One has a story, and one is just a coincidence, if you can even call it that. Yeah, because there's also only a, story a certain number of colors evidence, in the world. But at that point, it's just creating an entirely new story, creating a different continuity, mm -hmm. creating an alternate universe that you made up. And the problems don't even end there. There's a lot more when it comes to color connection theories, like how the rules work. If Circus Baby's green eyes are supposed to just represent Elizabeth, and Vanessa's green eyes are supposed to represent Elizabeth, when does that end? Would it mean every single character with green eyes is supposed to represent or be Elizabeth? And if we keep following those rules, would we end up with something like this? The main problem with these color connection theories is that there's no I love that photo, I've seen it so many times. For these things to happen. 
And if you try yeah. to set up the groundwork for these theories, you just end up there needs with a to be story, there needs to be context. You end up with a lot of yeah. ifs, like what if Elizabeth possessed Vanessa and gave her green eyes, or what if Gregory was a crying child robot and that's why he has brown hair and a striped shirt, or what if all of these people with the same green that's shirt who definitely are not true. Just supposed to be. <laughs> placeholders for an average human what if they're all just the same person and they're secretly <laughs> a giant lore character <laughs> this guy is funny i will say that hey, I hope you enjoyed is that the end i tried oh. something new with this more of a commentary based video um i hope you enjoyed i'm gonna be trying a lot of new stuff with the channel soon so uh, stay tuned. That's cool, man. If you like the video, feel free to subscribe. If you didn't like the video, feel free to subscribe anyway, because you might like a different video. And have a great day, night, or heat death of the universe, depending on what time you're watching. And goodbye. <laughs> you know, this video has actually inspired me, and, and not necessarily the theory, in, in the theory manner. But, like, I really enjoyed the, the comedic aspect of that. And, um, like, as you say, the... the the commentary of it, um, rather than, than, because a lot of like theory videos online are very serious. Like mine tend to be, not entirely serious. Like I, I try to be kind of um, relaxed with it still, uh, and kind of like, kind of like I'm showing you a presentation. I, I don't want to be too boring when I when I present my theories and stuff like that. But I do see a lot of theory videos online that are just like, okay, so this is what we're doing, and then this is. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's very kind of bog standard. Like, this is this is my this is my essay that I wrote, and I, and I really enjoyed that. Actually, like that made me laugh a lot, and I thought it was a really good video. I mean, I, I believe that Gregory is connected to the crying child, and I believe that Vanessa is connected to Elizabeth. But all of the points that you bring up are pretty valid. I think um, I did enjoy. And I thought that is a very valid point that color connection theories are a little bit iffy and we need a little bit more context than just colors to base a whole theory off of. Anyway, moving on. So the last video that I'm going to watch today is by Shy Crow. Yes, that is a very familiar face to a lot of you, I'm sure. 11.5 uh, thousand subscribers. Really? Only 11.5? I actually genuinely thought you had a lot more subscribers than that. Everyone go subscribe to all of the people that we've been reacting to in this video. This is his latest theory. Uh, it is currently sitting on 13,000 views. Who is the current C or who is the CEO of Fazbear Entertainment? Uh, the answer may surprise you. And this is fascinating. <laughs> because like, do we need to know who the CEO is? Or is it just like some random guy that we don't necessarily care about? I am intrigued to see what you are going to say about this Shy Crow. Uh, I actually believe I was supposed to be part uh, of this video. <laughs> I, I I was invited to to do um, like a bit, but I I wasn't really available at the time. So apologies, but I'm sure it will still be funny. Let's get straight into it. In 2021, FNAF Security Breach was released and just blew open the doors of the FNAF lore in hilarious fashion. This sort of legacy is quite funny. takes place in a future where the previously defunct brand of Fazbear Entertainment has suddenly returned bigger and brighter mm -hmm. than ever. Now, instead of the cheap hole-in-the-wall locations that the franchise was previously known for, in Security Breach, Fazbear Entertainment has somehow become a mega corporation, building world-class mega arcades left and right, and filling them the mega with the writers is of Star mega. Trek blush. But the question remains, just who exactly is behind all of this? Just how were they able mm -hmm. to do it? And perhaps most importantly of all, why is FNAF setting this up to be such a big mystery? And for us, unfortunately, FNAF, in rather typical fashion, just hasn't provided enough evidence at the moment to truly prove any Yeah, I, I think you're right about that. Really, all we can do is go character by character to see who best fits the mold that the narrative so far mm -hmm. has shown us. And while doing this exact process myself, I stumbled upon a character that has been all but ignored by the community in the process so far. So, before Ruin launches and probably gives us enough evidence to come to a conclusion here, I just wanted to give my crazy sounding, but surprisingly okay. plausible opinion on just who the CEO oh, of no. is. So, who are, who are the suspects, right? Who are the suspects? I believe MatPat has had two different ideas, uh, and that is, of course, Circus Baby and uh, Mrs. Afton. 
I don't think it's either of them. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I don't think it's either. I actually, I'm going to be really, really boring and just say it's some guy. Okay. Um, you know, in the storyteller, we have Mr. Burroughs and Edwin Murray as kind of... Or well, Mr. Burroughs was head of the board of directors, I believe. Not CEO, yes. Um, but I believe that just kind of shows that people higher up aren't necessarily, I guess, introduced fully into the story yet. And I, and I kind of hope that we do see see these people, but I, I have a feeling that it's not entirely important at the moment. Uh, like, it's not, it's definitely not solvable, but I guess we can speculate on, on who, if it is a past character, who it would be. I brought up the surprising evidence that Michael Afton may not only be alive in Security Breach, but also a high-ranking member of the new Fazbear Entertainment. I, and as you, crazy I as think it you sounds, could be right. if the man is still alive during that game, then why wouldn't he be? I mean, think yeah. about it. If Fazbear was reviving the I, player, I'm, then who yeah. better to bring on I think not so. only the man who lived but what would be all, his motivation? but also the sole living heir to the franchise? Again, sole living heir. Sorry, Matt Pat. But Mrs. Afton would be like 90 plus years old at this point. And Matt Pat says in the first part of his theory that William couldn't have been the one who started out Fred Bears because he would have been too old to be believable when the real meat of the franchise started. But then later in the theory, he goes and just gives the role of billionaire CEO and self-taught soul magic scientist to a 90 it's plus not year impossible. old lady. Who I mind you, was a 90 plus year old lady who totally killed herself after losing custody of her kids decades yeah. earlier. So... I, anyways, yeah, I agree with that. Half-conscious writing aside, as much as I see the evidence for Michael being alive and part of Fazcorp, I it's about really Michael can't Ron. see him being the CEO like I've seen so many people nowadays suggest. And this is for the simple reason that, on the wall in what's most likely his private room in the Pizzaplex, there is the famous security breach wall code, which is a direct command to Gregory, telling him to destroy the Glamrock animatronics in the game. If Michael is the one behind the wall code and is the CEO of Fazbear, then why not just order the Glamrocks to be decommissioned himself? If he's in charge, then why would Actually, he send yeah, a good point. 12 year old to do it? Robotic that is not? only if Michael no, is I think that if Michael is alive and working the code the writer plex, though. He's most likely to be so a I don't think that anymore. or a project lead for the Pizzaplex instead. Someone with the power to commission his own private area in the facility, but not someone with enough authority to change attractions in the mm -hmm. place, which we directly see in the tale story, The Storyteller. To change an attraction in the Pizzaplex requires a majority vote on the Fazbear Board of Execs. So, no. Sorry guys, I really don't believe in Mike CEO at this point. And speaking I think of it the could storyteller, be possible, but... it's a common misconception that the antagonist of the story, Mr. Burroughs, is actually the CEO of the new Fazbear Incorporated. Because in the books, while Not he CEO. does hold a lot of power in the company, he is pretty explicitly confirmed to be simply a chairman yes. or a member of the board of directors, not the CEO. So, if the respective evidence for the three most popular candidates for the role of CEO just don't really add up, just who is the mystery CEO of Fazbear then? Well, it's gonna sound crazy, but I think I have at least the best narrative answer to this question so far. Really consider smooching the ruined daycare attendant. Pretty mad. Generally think, speaking, I don't think about how smoochable well, honest, an animatronic is. Thing, <laughs> uh, you should start thinking about it because he's getting very close. <laughs> uh, hey guys. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. What's up? I think Sammy might be the CEO no. of Fazbear. <laughs> You've reached your limit on talking. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Wait, that's actually so funny. I might need to. I might need to replay that like ten times later. That was a hilarious clip. Uh, I was supposed to be a part of that. I'm glad I wasn't. I'm glad I wasn't. I have a lot of sound bites uh, in Discord that uh, uh, some appropriate, some less appropriate. So uh, I'm sure that would have gone crazy if if I would have been in that call. Anyway, yeah, I was supposed to be that, but couldn't make it. Uh -uh. Let's go. Hear me out, everyone. So Sammy the CEO. FNAF novel trilogy. Freddy's co-founder Henry actually has so two kids. So it's bringing the legacy of Henry, I guess. One. Charlie, who's the oldest, and her little brother Sammy. And in the novels, the story is really set in motion when oh, you Sammy, think Sammy is, is said still to have alive. been viciously murdered by William Afton. 
with the trauma over his death driving Henry to suicide. And yeah, but it turns out it William's was Charlie. Evil journey as a serial killer. And in the books, Sammy also plays as big role as a sort of supernatural entity. However, no. in the book lore nuclear bomb that is the final novel yeah. in the series, The Fourth Closet, everything gets it was mixed up. That Sammy was never killed after all, but rather, just like in the games, it was Charlie. And after Henry killed himself in the books, Sammy just went off with his mother and lived a normal life. It really is a beautifully shocking plot twist. A crazy it's, subversion yeah, it's pretty good. where the purported driver behind much of the story had just moved on and lived a normal life off screen. Uh. Henry is also never said to have only had one child in the games. We just kind of assume that he did because of the way he just kills himself at the end of FNAF 6. Because, well, that would really bite if he left a wife and kid behind, right? But the problem with that line of thinking is, this is exactly what the book version of Henry does. Because in the novels, Henry kills himself after Charlie's death, leaving a young Sammy fatherless. So, if book canon Henry was willing to leave his son fatherless, just why wouldn't game canon Henry do the same? And also, remember what I said earlier about Michael being the sole living heir to the franchise? Well, I lied. He shouldn't even have the rights to the Fazbear brand anyways. Because remember, his dad William was flat out booted from the company decades earlier. And just who was the last person to open up an official Freddy Fazbear's location? Henry, yeah. None other than Henry. That's, so that is a very good point. if it is Sammy at the top of this all, then that's why someone was not only able to acquire the rights, but also have the interest of rebuilding the long dead franchise of Fazbear Entertainment. But all hmm. of that aside, if we're speaking solely from a narrative point of view, Sammy could be one heck of a new villain for the franchise. Imagine if in the story that Henry had rubbed off on poor little Sammy in the worst way possible, and that all that Sammy had learned from his dad was how to step on other people on the ladder to success, with Sammy deciding to use his anger and neglect to not only just walk the way of his dad, no, but to take the extra step and do it better, with Sammy huh. becoming a very okay. successful businessman. But unlike his dad, okay. who always wanted to keep the franchise in a cheap and nostalgic past, Sammy was going to take the company to the future. But how exactly? Well, by doing the opposite of his father and dancing with the trauma that the franchise had endured. With Sammy knowing that the company was a national pariah at this point, but instead of trying to haphazardly mm. cover it up as previous owners of the franchise had done, he decided to run full force with it. With Sammy commissioning a series of indie horror games to jump on the growing popularity of the franchise, becoming a trendy creepypasta slash urban legends fodder, sowing the seeds with well-timed publicity stunts for the franchise. That would be an amazing story and one heck of a direction to take the franchise in the future. I somewhat Focusing agree. on the unintended legacy and domino effects of the hurt that the characters of the past caused instead of just mm -hmm. pointlessly reviving them to pad out the future so by means of past experience with this franchise i don't think this is the route modern fnaf will take but hey sometimes the only thing sweeter than being completely right about something is being dead dead wrong about it anyways this is shycro signing off that's an interesting thought what do i think about that i don't have any thoughts <laughs> i've never even considered this possibility is it even a possibility? Um, I mean, anything's a possibility, right? Nothing's impossible. I don't know what to think. It's strange. It's strange. My, my opinion of this is why, I think. And, like, I think all of this is very heavy speculation. I think there's nothing in the games to say this is the case. At the same time, you're, you're kind of right. It, it, it does make a good story. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what to think. That's this, this is a really difficult one. I think good video, first of all. Um, it's interesting, and that, that bit was so funny. Uh, it's, it's replaying my mind over and over again. <laughs> was that ambience that had the... Uh, that had the... <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know what to think. That's so strange. It's such a weird theory that Sammy would just come out of nowhere, but like... You could be right. It, it would be pretty cool to have that kind of dynamic. I just feel like we would have seen Sammy before if he did exist in the games. Um, because remember, like, you, you kind of have to take the, the novel trilogy with a grain of salt. I know we've taken a lot of names from the novel trilogy, but like, 
to to say that some of the events in there actually happen in the games is y- you you have to take that with a grain of salt really um so i don't know i i i think it could be good but i don't see any like definable evidence for that at the moment um but nevertheless interesting video um i'm sure that's going to get some more clicks because it's an interesting topic and it's a very controversial uh, outcome. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the second ever theory review. Make sure you subscribe for more and let me know in the comments and in my Discord server uh, whether you'd like me to continue this series and what videos you would like me to react to next. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then. Goodbye.